Live from the studios of Coefficient Media in Jackson, Michigan, this show is brought to you by Audible.com, the leading provider of spoken audio information and entertainment. Listen to audiobooks wherever and whenever you are or you want. And by Carbonite Online Backup, automatic online backup with anytime, anywhere access. Let's get this thing started. This is the Android App Show, episode number 73. Uh, This week we do have some bad news to talk about, at least for uh, honeycomb buyers in Europe and Australia. But uh, we're going to also be reviewing some honeycomb apps. Yeah, here we go. Welcome to the Android App Show. The future of the telephone business is bright and rich with promise for the millions of telephone whose quick acceptance and ready use of each improvement in telephone service has helped make possible an endless chain of accomplishments. What will it be this time? Welcome to the show, everyone. This is the Android App Show, as you've as you've heard. <laughs> this is Lane. And this is Dave. And uh, we're going to be covering some news this week, of course. Uh, first, we're going to cover some app reviews. Mm-hmm. Uh, totally. But pretty exciting week this week. We have a Honeycomb device on loan from Verizon to review for the Android Tech Show. So oh that gosh. means we have some Honeycomb apps to review. It's so great. Yes. <laughs> so uh, people have been asking us, when are you going to come up and uh, review some Honeycomb apps? Uh, when we get a Honeycomb device. Which is now. Yes. So uh, even if it's, if it's for a short period of time. Um, yeah. But I don't know. The, good, the news is that the Honeycomb devices are getting cheaper. So yeah, three hundred thirty dollars now at Walmart. So I've heard. So pretty good. Uh, and I'm not talking. You know, it's a it's a device I could actually recommend. <laughs> it has strong enough specs. So yeah. that's pretty encouraging. Yeah, as to see Android fight back on the cost front for this. Uh, but what should we get into first? Well, I think we should talk about our sponsor first. You heard a little bit at the beginning of the show there, but just to uh, keep you informed. Carbonite is a sponsor of the show this week. Uh, we actually have two sponsors, so we're really... Yeah. Uh, that's how we can afford the uh, the free <laughs> tablets that they send us. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, we just keep them for a while. And if we break them, you know, see? it's just... It costs just, like, a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, so. and we've got this new studio that we're working on here, so... We need sponsors, and Carbonite is just a great one to have. I mean, yeah. they are, like... When you think automatic backup, Carbonite should be the first name that comes to mind because they are just that good. Yeah, and it's great. You just install something on your computer. Uh, It doesn't matter if it's Mac or PC, and it pushes your backup right to the cloud. So Mm -hmm. you just pay a a small monthly fee. You don't have to worry about how much space you need. Unlimited. Yep, Uh, whether all, you know, what files are kept. Nope, it does it all for you. Yeah, you you may think your stuff is backed up, but I mean... In worst case scenarios, we don't like to think about it, but if there's a fire, a flood, a tornado, you know, we just had some crazy weather around here this past weekend. Hail, which yeah. is unusual for Michigan. Hail, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I like to say because I grew up in a, or, yeah. Yeah. Hail. I used to live in a town named Hail. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Wow. That was their slogan that they put at the, at the when you drive in. Yeah. Our, our cottage is up near Hail, Michigan. So oh, is it actually Hale, Michigan, or is it Hell, Michigan? Hale. Oh, okay. So everybody would so, say, Hale, yeah. There is, a, there is a Hell, Michigan. Yes, there so is. They probably competed stealing slogos from each other. So. Yes. Or slogans. Slogos? Slogos. <laughs> uh, but with uh, Carbonite, new word. you can access your files, not only on your computer, but on your Android, iPhone, or BlackBerry phone, anywhere. That is the amazing part of it, too. Uh, and what's great is they let you try it out for 14 mm-hmm. days. Uh, you know, so you can kind of get used to it. Um, but we don't think that's enough time. No. We want you to try it out for two months. Uh, just go to Carbonite.com, click on the uh, big green learn more button. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you sign up there on that page, put in TPN, as in Tech Podcast Network, TPN, for two months for free. That's a good deal. So you can't beat that. It's a great way to support the show. And mm-hmm. uh, you get that extra. It's like four times as much, four times as long. Yeah. So, uh, okay, let's yeah. get into the ads here. Or apps done, done with the ads <laughs> into the apps. So, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, when people first get these 
tablets, uh, they want to tell their social network about it, right? Totally. Tablet yeah. just arrived. Uh, yeah. So this week I'm going to be covering two uh, social network apps. Uh, the first one is going to be for uh, Twitter, and the second one is going to be for Facebook. Mm-hmm. So the first one is called Tweetcaster HD. Uh, this one is a free app for Twitter. So you can, you know, view all your tweets, tweet about your your uh, new <laughs> tablet. I mean, the yeah. interface, the web browser on these, you know, it's it's a full web browser experience. It's great. Um, but I like having apps that can take advantage of the notification system. Mm-hmm. So as great as the web browser is, uh, you just really need these full uh, full things. And uh, the default Twitter app will run on the tablet, uh, but it does it in the compatibility mode for Android 2 dot whatever apps. So uh, it is not a true tablet app. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring it up here with the uh, the gadget cam. So there's a, there's no HDMI out on the Samsung Galaxy Tab. So here we go, Tweetcaster. Nice. So it's pretty simple uh, tablet like interface with an ad down here in the corner. It's ad supported, mm-hmm. uh, which is it's great because I like to see the developer making money and me not have to take it out of my pocket. Yeah. So. Uh, whenever you first load it up, though, you'll be confronted with uh, a sign-in page, and you can add your personal account, and of course, all your extra professional accounts on here as well. Uh, and so, whenever you go to the top left button inside the app, uh, boom, it lets you scroll through accounts and switch. So, multi-accounts, very awesome. And it has trends listed out here, so you can flip through the Twitter sends, uh, Twitter trends. Uh, who to follow? They have like this uh, directory here, of uh, of people to follow based on huh. you know popularity inside different uh, groups, you know technology, etc. So that's kind of cool to be able to skip through uh, through that and find some new stuff. Always looking for new people to follow, new interesting mm-hmm. people to follow on Twitter. Uh, yeah. You can save, you can put up searches on here. So let's see if I go in and do a search for Android. Boom. I can save the search. Uh, it gave an error code when trying to save it. Huh. Mm. That's weird. I don't know if it's saving it. Okay, so I did the search. I should be able to go back here. Yep, and it's in my list of searches. Uh, it keeps the history. Cool. I can just flick through and close the keyboard down there in the corner. Uh, so all that's accessible through this main like overall menu for all your accounts. And then they have a nearby uh, scrolling thing here. So that, that shows wherever you're at, uh, what people are tweeting in your area. So, and different things light up on here depending on, you know, what you have active. If you have mentions or something, uh, you'll be able to click great right on that, on the at sign. It takes you to the me- mentions for that specific user. Uh, one of the annoying things, though, you'll go up here to the top right and go to settings. Uh, and you'll want to go to notifications, the third one down. Uh, notify on new tweets is checked by default. Uh, you'll want to disable that because... If you if you do the notification for new tweets, every time somebody tweets something, it'll uh, pop up down here in your uh, notification area. Dang. So I turned my notifications off because I don't need my tablet and my phone yelling at me. Uh, but again, you you do have uh, options for URL shortening, image service. You know the standard fare that comes in uh, Twitter apps. It's nice to uh, uh, choose your own. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but the interface is kind of like the reverse of Twitter mentions favorites and then you can view your own tweets if you really are that into yourself I am so good stuff there uh, up at the top there's links to compose and you can refresh your timeline but uh, when you compose here you can uh, choose multiple accounts oh, if you well, want that's to cool. that's really cool so and you can add Facebook if you huh. want and it keeps track of drafts so you can save stuff Think about it throughout the day, whatever. And then you can attach files and it'll use your uploader slash URL shortener. Links and geolocation also. Yep. So uh, there's a quick link to the settings right here instead of having to go through all that rigmarole. 
So and switching accounts is easy <coughs> just by going there. It's it's just it's nice have, being a multi account user. Uh, this is really a power user app, and essentially, if you're gonna buy a tablet and you're gonna get a Twitter app, uh, you're probably a power user. Yeah, that thing feels nice on there too. So yeah, the the layout and everything is is great. Huh. So and it, it it kind of it does look kind of like an iPad kind of app the way they do some of their stuff but it's uh it's definitely the you know they have the built-in menus up here on the top mm -hmm. uh, which are the the honeycomb style so like the iPad it's a little bit different it has all that stuff on the bottom of course Android keeps their main bar down here on the bottom uh, but for Tweetcaster for Android instead of for the iPad version uh, it's all up here and then the iPad has it on the bottom mm -hmm. but. Good stuff. It does look kind of similar, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Similar to the iPad version. Yeah. So if you've used the iPad version, uh, you'll probably like this. You'll have to get used to some of the changes, but the main uh, setup is still pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's it for uh, that review. That Again, that's Tweetcaster HD Beta, and it's a free app uh, to use for Twitter on your Android tablet. That's really powerful for, like, a free app, though. Yes. Like, I'm really impressed with that. Yeah, uh, I could see somebody, you know, taking something like that and adding, like, maybe link statistics or whatever, like Hootsuite. So yeah, that would be uh, cool to see. Uh, but I, I I dumped Hootsuite because they made me mad. So <laughs> I'm not going to review their app anymore. Okay, well, I let's, dumped them. <laughs> let's get right into our next app now. Yes, okay. this is another free app. Uh, but this one has a, an interesting twist on, on the free idea. Uh, this one's called Friend Me. I think like the friend, the full name is Friend Me for Facebook. Yes, it is. So, and then they go even farther on their display for the you know that's on the website. It's Friend Me for Facebook on your Android tablet. <laughs> so free, yeah, good times there. But it is a free app. Uh, let's go ahead and bring it up here. I'll pop this open. Uh, you might notice it mm. looks kind of similar to the other one. Um, the company that makes that Twitter app I reviewed does make a Facebook app, yeah. but I like this one better. Hmm. So, uh, but this is ad supported ad. as well yeah. down here in the bottom. Uh, but you do have the option, uh, to go up and remove the ads and it oh, will do an in-app purchase, uh, where you can upgrade. That's so, cool. And it'll come up here and, uh, did you just do it? No, I, well, I hit it and then it'll tell you the price. How much is price? So two ninety nine. That's not bad. Uh, but if you want to just leave the ad down there, really, you know, what's two ninety nine to you? It's over here on the right side. So uh, it's nice to have that option, though. You know, keep totally. the developer can keep money from all the installs or whatever. You can use it free, um, or just support the developer, pay three bucks, and they'll they'll leave you alone. Uh, but you can flip through your Facebook feed right here. Uh, you know, anytime you want to click on something, it'll pop up the uh, the actual post mm -hmm. where all the comments are listed out. It includes uh, images and uh, videos and stuff. Let's see, that's Family Guy from Bitly. These are some external sites. I was trying to see if there was like maybe a YouTube uh, clip because those are usually uh, pretty good. All these stinking fortune things, whatever. Fortune? What do you mean? Uh, your your Libra, you know, horoscope. Mm. Uh, but you can pull up your own profile on here. It'll show your wall. And your photo albums. So you oh. can go through, uh, like this photo album only has one. Uh, let's see. Here's photos from my son's breasts. That's kind of cool. Uh, but it pulls them up. It's, uh, I don't know. It's a good interface for a Facebook app, you know, to show pictures. But I do prefer the gallery mm -hmm. over this. So you click on any one of these. And I'll show you the picture, and you can kind of just, you know, pop through them. That's and cool. Can you uh, swipe through them at all stuff. or anything? No. Nope. No gesture. Um, but you can write comments down there. Hmm. Let's close this. Close that. I did bring up the friends already, right? Nope. Well, the friends, uh, close the keyboard, keep popping up on me. You can search through your friends. Uh, you click on any of them. Let's see. I'll bring up. I'll bring up my wife. So I'll pick on my other friends, view all their information in their wall. Cool. So very, uh, it's a it's a very nice layout. This three column bit with the navigation on the side, mm -hmm. I really love that. Any groups you're associated with, they'll show up on here, and it's the same, uh, 
same lay layout. So let's see. We have, uh, I don't know, a bunch of crap. Let, let's bring up the Jackson group. Info on the Jackson group, the wall for the Jackson group, and you can post on it. Cool. So messages, very same thing, you know, three column layout. Uh, it's a it's a real winner for them. You can go through and look at all your game notifications. Wow. So if you really care about that, I don't play any of these games. But you're still invited to like a million of them. Yeah. That's so hilarious. if you ever want to dig into that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's cool. It shows you the games that other people are playing. And I think... Click on, I don't know what I'm clicking on. I'll click on a random one and bring it up to some stuff. But this is yeah. in the browser mm -hmm. here. It uses the web view. And because Android has Flash, oh. as long as the game doesn't require... Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to allow some stuff here. I'm oh. probably not going to like... Yeesh. Remind me to you come back in and turn this stuff off later. But I think that you should be able to play the games in here. Should be able to. Like I say, it's it's limited by the interface, uh -oh. though. Uh, Wait. It's going. I see nothing. It's probably still loading, though. The flash element's probably the last thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Who knows? I don't see anything. No. Yeah. So bad stuff there though. Your you don't mileage wanna, may vary. Yeah, you don't want to play Facebook games on here anyway. And then your <laughs> notifications are clear down here at the bottom. I would have liked to have seen a you know a a button yeah. up here along the top for the notifications, uh, just because that's a lot more of an integral part of Facebook than like you have to scroll and go like to the bottom or something. That's not. Yeah, that's, that's not, not where it should be. Good. So okay. maybe even above the news have the notifications or something. I don't know. Or just like a little number or something, kind of how. Yeah, like well, almost like Facebook puts it up here at the top. Yeah, you could put it right up there. People, I think, would uh, look to that for a common area. Yeah. So, uh, you know, good stuff when you let's go ahead and have the big button up here to share a link or a photo. So you can choose a photo, take a photo. I think that it even allows you to uh, let's do some. Video. No, I no, guess it doesn't allow you no to do No switch. That. So. Just a photo. Messy studio. <laughs> so then go back. Yep. Uh huh. Doing a lot of thinking, uh -oh. huh? It doesn't look good. Uh, force close. Oh. So, but here's the other thing too. Okay. Uh, when you first set it up, you can set up multiple accounts. Cool. So I have me on here. My wife is on here, or you can add accounts. Uh, so if you you know if you have to manage different stuff like that, uh, you don't see too many multiple account Facebook apps, at least not on Android. Right. So and then over here in the drop down menu is where you uh, back out. You oh, log cool. out, but it's quote unquote logging out. Yeah. It saves the uh, key because it doesn't save your password on here. It actually does the login using the Facebook website hmm. uh, properly, you know. So uh, good stuff, I think, anyway. Uh, but I don't know, even, you know, most people don't even put their Facebook accounts or whatever where their family could get to. <laughs> <laughs> so whoever, you know, gets the tablet, they'll be able to uh, to access your Facebook account and whatever ones get put on here. Yep. Uh, there was another one uh, called Friendcaster, made by the Tweetcaster people. Mm -hmm. Had some good points, but it's still in beta. I thought it wasn't as strong as this one. So it, it, anyway, for the the strongest, the best one right now at the time of this review, I say friend me. Uh, so friend me for Facebook. I like that. It's free. It can't that, be free. That was a good one. Has yeah. the, has multiple user account switching and all that. Yeah. That's good for free. Yeah, and it's, you it's don't crazy. Get, you don't get something that good on the iPad for free. No, no, not for free. They make you pay for it. Yeah. But, you know, those are different. It's different communities, different standards, I think. Mm -hmm. is really what that's all about. We expect yeah. free stuff. <laughs> yeah. But not everything is free in life. No. Uh, and we do have to uh, we do have to pay for this episode, so we're going to hit the, uh, the next sponsor. Yes. We have uh, for this is Audible. Yeah, can you believe that? We have Audible as a sponsor. Yeah, good stuff. Good uh, stuff. We're glad to have them, too. They are awesome. I've used them <laughs> for a long time. Um, and we want you, of course, to go to, right off the bat here, audiblepodcast.com slash Android app. Yes. So. That's where you can uh, you can download it. Yep. 
So are we doing the uh, do a recommendation for yeah, it? Yeah, totally. Do you have a recommendation? Uh, I I actually do have a recommendation for an audible, audible an audible book. Yeah, I'll pull I'll pull up the app here on on your because I was uh, I was looking at it. it's called cool. the Big Short. Can you even show it? Yeah, if you want to. Well, we can. This is it's formatted for. This right. it isn't formatted for honeycomb, so I'd feel bad. But it works. Putting them on a blast. Yeah, it does work. It's cool. So, but it's it's the Big Short. It's by Michael Lewis. Uh, this is really like it's it's about the whole 2008 collapse and you know what exactly everybody got away with. Oh so, yeah. Uh, if yeah, if you want to get mad at the banks and read a book that's gonna help encourage that, then <laughs> uh, The Big Short by Michael Lewis. <laughs> and you can get that on Audible. You can get it for uh, how much do you think they should pay for it? Uh, well, gee, I don't know. I could tell you on here because they we have had to the, ask uh, you what would <laughs> you pay for a book like that? No, just kidding. On the that's that's the thing. I think it's uh, like thirty bucks or something like that. Mm-hmm. So, well, good stuff in their app. They have a a shopping function. Hmm. <laughs> well, right now you can get it for fourteen day free trial. Ooh, and that's plenty of time to, uh, you know, to listen to it. Mm-hmm. Just by signing up at audiblepodcast dot com slash android app. And uh, good, good recommendation, good service, good sponsorship. Yeah, and the great thing is too, when you sign up, uh, you get a thirty percent discount. What? It's like, uh, isn't it what the? Uh, what? You get a thirty percent discount on what the list price is. Oh, I don't know. Or is it ten percent? I thought it was thirty percent. I don't know. But they have a list price for what the books are. You know, if you're not a member of Audible, oh, okay. you know, for the monthly rate. Oh, so if you like buy it through iTunes or something. Yeah. Uh, then you just get a you get the you know the full rate. Um, but with Audible, if you sign up and become a member, mm-hmm. then you get one free book a month. Okay. They give you one free credit, and you can download every month. You know, one free oh, book, and, and the membership a- is actually less than what it costs to right. listen to the book. Yeah. So you it, you know it's a it's a great deal. Hmm. It's a great deal. If you're not one, you know, if you're not a member and you think that you might be able to listen to one book a month, it is definitely worth it for you to just sign up for a membership. Mm-hmm. You get your free book, and then you get uh, a good percentage off for uh, anything else. Well, that's cool. I like it. Thanks for the uh, the recommendation on a book, and thanks to Audible for being a sponsor. Yes. All right, we've got uh, some more stuff to talk about. The show is not over by any means. No, no, uh, not yet. We have, some, <laughs> we have some great news we're going to talk about, so let's start the Android news. Yes, the, right the marathon of of good news. No, no bad no, news. Bad news. Uh, yeah. So there, there's been a a big problem. The uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab has now been banned. <sighs> no, not that banned in bad. the USA. Uh, it's been banned in Europe and in Australia because of some uh, ruling by German court saying that you know it's in violation of some of Apple's patents. <laughs> And, you know, agreements between the countries and everything in the European Union. So mm-hmm. if you live in the, uh, you know, in, in Europe, then you're kind of hosed. Hosed. Hooped. So, sorry, guys. Um, I don't know. I'd like to see something settled, but it's it's a bad day for Android. You know, this stuff is going to kind of, uh, I don't know, it's going to put a wet blanket over everything. So why exactly did they did they want it blocked? Uh, why? Like, what was the, what exactly was the violation? Yeah. Just, it's too cool? It was. <laughs> it was too cool. Was it too much like the iPad? Is that what they were thinking? I'm trying to pull up the news story here. I just, I skimmed through this one. Yeah. You'd, you'd ask me a question on something that I didn't. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you'd know something about it. Of it was the biggest story of the week. Well, you yeah, you would think that I would have looked into it more. You think so? It's okay though. It was Apple though. Yeah, Apple totally was like. Well, they you know they they filed similar things in the United States saying that their uh, design violates uh, you know the it might be even the trademark or whatever because the the mm-hmm. original lawsuits that came uh, across for Samsung were. Look at here's Samsung phone. Here's the iPhone next to each other. Look at the the dock is the same. The icons they totally changed the whole look of Android. 
uh, from the default icons, which look like regular computer icons, just, you know, a little bit different or whatever, to being all blocky, uh, you know, primary bright color icons. So bad mm-hmm. stuff. Uh, they've Samsung is pretty much we, we've talked about this on the show before. Uh, Samsung kind of did copy Apple. So, right. you know, it's a uh, it's kind of blatant. Every you know, from the design of the devices to uh, just the general look and feel. Uh, you know, maybe when we talk about the they're... iPad, these things don't really look like on the front. Yeah, maybe it looks like the iPad, but the operating system isn't so much a direct ripoff of the stuff that the iPad has, um, as their phones are. Their phones mm-hmm. rip off the iPhone a lot more. And that's kind of what it was for. I just was reading it here. It's for because of the look and feel. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a trademark issue then. Mm-hmm. It's not a patent issue. See, you can defend yourself using trademark if somebody tries to completely rip off your thing. But patents, eh, it's a little bit different. If it's through the U.S. International Trade Commission. Yeah. It doesn't mean trademark, though. I don't know. Look and feel, though. I'm saying yeah, if it's the look exactly. and feel, then, yeah. Wow. wow. It's a rough day. Yeah, it's essentially getting banned for becoming, you know, producing a knockoff. That is, uh, sorry, sorry guys. <laughs> but uh, let's see. We'll we'll cover some more news here. Uh, another kind of this one was kind of a big story too. Uh, uh, Google stepping up to defend developers from load sys now. Oh really? Yeah, they're trying to. Uh, they're actually trying to intervene, and. Uh, and protect developers. That's good. And Apple's been doing that, saying, you know, no, we have this agreement, and our developers are, you know, protected because, you know, we license the software from you, and they're just using the API that we published. And by the way, we have this line in our agreement that says, hey, uh, w- by the way, all of our people that we license this stuff out to, they are protected as well. So... But Google's stepped up, and it's it's not something that exactly the same like Apple. They have taken it upon themselves to be like the primary defender. Uh, Google is actually filing to have the loads pass patents reexamined, and uh, possibly narrowing the scope of these patents, uh, so that everybody benefits instead of just protecting your own developers like Apple is. Uh, Google's really trying to push to say, "Hey, wait a second, these are way too broad." So you're kind of you know, taking everybody's milkshake and uh, it's not fair. <laughs> so if if Google's successful, though, they're filing saying that they should be reexamined. If that's successful, then it's kind of funny because it does it help iPad developers as well. It'll help the yeah. iPad platform yeah, because, it, you know, it'll be everybody. Yeah. So it'd be nice to keep an eye on that and see where that goes. It would be. And uh, let's get in some, into some quick news stories here, some... Some really quick yeah. ones. Dell is giving uh, the Streak 5 an axe in America. Ooh, cutting them yeah. out. Sorry. Yeah, it was a big failure. Yeah. It is like a super duper phone. Nobody mm. wants a 5 inch tablet. I do. Mm. I don't know. Too small. Too s- Well, for free, maybe a 5 inch tablet. It'd be too I small pay for money a tablet. For a 5 inch tablet, especially what they want for them. It'd be perfect for a phone, though. 5 inches? Yeah. That's on the large end. The 4.5 inch phones are kind of, eh, they're really stretching it. I'm a little large. I'm a large man. I need a large phone. That's true. You're still used to the iPhone, though. You don't have a, you don't even no, have the 4.3 inch like the Evo. <laughs> I have screen envy. The funny thing is, though, they, uh, they are, they're cutting this off. It's nice to see them realizing the Dell Streak 5, it's dead. It's weird. Uh, with 7, they are upgrading to Honeycomb. Ooh. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it's still a little bit too expensive for the hardware that they have. Uh, but, hey, if you did go ahead and take the plunge and buy the Dell Streak 7, you are going to be getting Honeycomb soon. Hmm. So I've seen the, the pictures of it running. It looks good. That is good. Uh, some more news. Well, possibly news. Maybe news. If it's real, it's news. But it might not be news. Yes. <laughs> uh, ice cream sandwich images have been leaked. It's a, it's a warm ice cream sandwich. It's been leaking everywhere. Nice. And <laughs> we don't know if these are real or if they're not. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Lane? Do you think they're real? I th- I don't want to believe that they're real. You don't think so? No. Uh, because I don't know if you want to pull them up here to look at yeah 
the this is the this is from uh, where tree tech tech tree dot com so basically what it looks like is just the theming uh, that you can get on like I could reproduce this on my phone right here this is a cyanogen mod theme uh, they have oh. a honeycomb one that lets you change uh, the layout so I don't think that they're gonna stick to the exact same images uh, that they stole from honeycomb just recolor them a little and in fact that's kind of a yeah so and this isn't really changed much uh, it's still a lot of the same graphics that are used right now in gingerbread and I guess I can put this down here <laughs> um, wait a second it almost looks like you're actually using look at this lane actually has Ooh, the new operating time. system on this <laughs> Um, but these down here, the launcher has been customized a little bit. Again, this is on a Samsung phone, so you don't know if this has been pre-made or whatever. Um, but they put the on launcher down here in the left corner and then three other. So it looks it's like a reverse of the Samsung TouchWiz setup or three apps that's wild. and then the launcher. So uh, but that's the first screenshot. And here's one that they say is the re-made uh, notification <laughs> bar. So that when you bring down notification as apps, they black, widgets, blacked everything out. I know this is the this is adding stuff to the home screen. I'm getting my stuff out of order. Okay, apps and widgets to add to the home screen and a link over to the thing. It seems that seems kind of reasonable. Uh, we've seen we've seen some uh, work on that, like on the Motorola phone that we reviewed not mm -hmm. that long ago, the Droid X2. Yeah. Uh, this here is the new notification screen, though. So yeah. different stuff in here that you can clear out. I don't know. I don't believe that that's going to be the final thing. And the Android version is listed as ice cream sandwich. It doesn't even have a number. Mm. So we all assume it's going to be 4.0. But the release is IRK36B. So that could be a real uh, release too. Hmm. So um, this was supposedly taken on a Samsung phone. Again, I don't know if I want to believe this. I almost think that the... I w the, I almost think that I would like to see the notifications go to the bottom of the screen like what they are in Honeycomb. <laughs> you know, if you had a phone oh, yeah. like this tablet and you could have the, the back and the home and the switcher key on the left side just like you do on Honeycomb but have it in portrait mode, uh, you know, there there could be some, some work done to make that all fit so the no notification fits down there with the time and everything mm -hmm. and move the stuff from the top to the bottom. Because uh, especially for some of the bigger phones, we're talking about 4.5 inch and four point or no, five inch phones. Like you were mm -hmm. saying, you like a five inch phone. You got to think about the mechanics of reaching oh, all the way yeah. to the top and pulling down that screen all the time. It'd be, it would just be nice to have them right off the bottom. Wouldn't that be funny if Android switched over to that, to, right as Apple was switching to it to the top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that would be awesome. Is what I call hilarious. that. <laughs> so again, I'd like to see bottom notifications. Uh, we'll see if that happens on the phone, uh, mm -hmm. but nobody knows these things. I don't think they're real images. I yeah, really they don't. looked a little weird. And if they are, they might be very early, like transitioning to the new interface. Because from what they're saying, if you're going to combine the features of Honeycomb and Gingerbread, mm -hmm. you know, to bring out Ice Cream Sandwich and bring that to the phones, uh, that just looks like a rethemed Gingerbread with maybe a couple other things tweaked. And if that's what Ice Cream Sandwich is, that's going to be a real disappointment. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like a major release to me. So it sounds like Android 3.5 or something. <laughs> Not 4.0. Yeah. So I guess we'll just have to see how that goes. Uh, one of the other cool things, Symantec has uh, released a free antivirus app for Android. That's cool. That's good. So it does pretty much the same thing that the existing uh, apps do. Like I have uh, Lookout for mine. It scans them when you install them and, you know, mm -hmm. just to see if they match any of the lists for, you know, what do they call them, a virus apps or something they call them. There's some special name that they were yeah. using for them. I'm drawing a blank on it but now, but uh, it'll scan it, and then it'll periodically scan your phone to see if, there, if it happened to just missed one. So, mm. uh, But that controversial dogfighting app that we talked about before, yeah, uh, they're going to be upgrading that. This is, I didn't want to put this on the big news, you know what I mean? But it now has more details about fighting dogs like steroid injections, withholding water and food, and bait dog fighting. Uh, and really? they claim that it's it's actually improving your life because it introduces new enforcement mechanism called uh, FETA, F-E-T-A, that is supposed to give a better impression of what actually happens when you fight dogs. So, like, if you get caught or, like, raids happen randomly, I don't know. To me, it seems like it's probably more like drug wars with the random police arrested you and you got your stuff taken away and you got to start over. Hmm. So, who knows? 
who knows how the thing is. But they're saying that they're actually uh, an animal lover that they're trying to wear, raise awareness of dog fighting. So that by putting the ugly truth out there on the market, you know, that people can actually see what the stuff goes through, mm-hmm. that it will raise the bile enough, mm-hmm. you know, that people will just be like, oh, dog fighting is horrible. Something needs to be done. Yeah. So it's kind of like an Andy, uh, what was the, not Andy Warhol, but the, uh, the comedian. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> so somebody else send us a message. You idiots. It's mm-hmm. so-and-so. The man on the moon guy. Yeah. So Andy Sandberg. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Griffith. Uh, but like, it's kind of like that, you know, in your face and, you know, the, 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 the supposedly the funny part is making you angry and getting you upset. So, uh, maybe that's just, uh, what he's trying to do. That's what he claims he's trying to do, but who knows? Just going to make money off of it either way. So, mm-hmm. uh, and the last thing I kind of wanted to cover might be a, a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. But this, this sounds like more like a tech story, but I think this is revolutionary, revolutionary enough. Uh, that we should be talking about it on here. Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. There you go. Sorry. No, that's a good... Uh, I forgot. I totally forgot. I'm like, Jim Carrey, Jim Carrey. No. <laughs> uh, but the, this latest big rumor that I want to talk about, Amazon could be subsidizing their tablet, that they're rumored to release at the end of the year, putting it at a price of $249. Ooh, that's... To make up the uh, difference with uh, yeah. music, movie, and app sales. So it'd be like... You know, they've been doing pretty well with the Kindle, with yeah. that, that ad-supported Kindle. I think so, Kindle. yeah. And the ad-supported Kindle, if you're not familiar with it, when you turn the device off, it just puts uh, some, basically like a magazine ad yeah. on the cover of the device. And it's e-ink, so it doesn't cost anything to keep the screen like that. Boom. Mm. You know, you just turn it like that and it's, uh, you know, the device might as well, the screen might as well completely bl- be completely blank. Yeah. And I've said before, whoever thought of that at Amazon was a genius. Yeah. I don't know if somebody thought of it outside the company and then they went along with it or whatever, but uh, that guy should be making a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder how much it is. How, do you know how much it is difference between the ad supported and non ad supported ones? No, like uh, from the sense of it, it, I think it was almost like a hundred dollar difference mm. between the two. So, and of course you, you can quote me for that cause I said it on the show, but yeah, I don't will. quote me for that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but it's good stuff, uh, and if they can if they can make it work on the Android platform, uh, we're talking about two hundred fifty dollars for a high end tablet, not not cheap cheap, you know, tablet or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, and if it's running Honeycomb and everything, then two hundred fifty bucks HDMI out Honeycomb. I'm yeah. all about that. And they're saying that the uh, the tablet to make it would cost about two hundred or would cost about three hundred dollars. Yeah. So they're talking about you know taking it from that. And stepping stepping back on the discount, yeah. uh, but they'll make up more than they figured. Uh, it's funny uh, a life cycle of eighteen months, mm-hmm. you know, for the device, yeah. and how much money that they would make from sales and stuff like that. It just completely blows away the discount. Huh. So within the, you know, within the first six months or something like that, uh, sh- short of six months, they'll make the money back from what they discounted it. That's cool. So they're figuring, you know, if it's a tablet. It's awesome and it's cheap. Mm-hmm. Then you'll have that extra money to buy the apps. Yeah, <laughs> you'll have extra money to buy an iPad. Yeah, maybe. Just kidding. Those are too <laughs> expensive. Yeah, and How then you get are? the iPad and you're like, "Geez, these apps are expensive." <laughs> <laughs> How much are the cheap iPads? Uh, five hundred. Five hundred. So yeah. yeah, this is quite a bit. This well, is you half. can get them for three hundred or two fifty uh, if you get the refurbished, oh. or you know, yeah, whatever. The original ones or whatever. So oh, the old ones, no one wants those. Yeah. Well, you know, everybody wants the new. It's the same price. Yeah. But it's new. Totally. Twice as good. Same yeah. price. All that Moore's Law stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that covers the news for us this week. It does. If you want to find out more about the show, uh, then we encourage you to go to uh, theandroidappshow.com. Of course, you'll find more episodes there. You'll find links out to our Android app that you can install. Mm-hmm. Our Twitter account and our YouTube account right on the top. It's good Making stuff. Making it easy. Yeah, it's really fun. I like it a lot. We've also got our uh, our Twitter account, which is at Android App Show. So that's pretty simple to follow. Yeah. Just type it in. Use uh, 
what was it? Tw- use Tweetcaster HD. There you go. And uh, <laughs> just do a little searchy search for us, and we'll be right there. And then uh, I think we have a Facebook page too, but YouTube. Yes. YouTube.com slash the Android app shows where we post our videos. Um, if you if you don't like watching them on our website or on our app, you can always go to YouTube and uh, follow us there or subscribe or whatever you want to do. You kids, you like your YouTubes. So it's a good time. And we also would like to uh, remind you of uh, the Blueberry Podcast Network. That's where we have our show over at and uh, there's also a bunch of other great shows out there that do some good good stuff oh our our facebook is facebook.com slash android app show also yeah very cool so you follow us on there and you know we, we don't send a lot of messages out we have no. basically new show releases um big news items we'll mm-hmm. publish on facebook but you know yeah. it's kind of a little bit more laid back totally as facebook should be you yeah. know you follow some of these corporate accounts and they flood you yeah, not Ooh. cool. Not cool. <laughs> we just want you to be friends with us so we can advertise to you. That's right. Just kidding. Just friends, not, you know, shouting in your face acquaintances. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and uh, speaking of advertising to you, one last time, we do want to remind you that uh, we had a sponsor for the show this this uh, this week, and it was, if I can get it to work here. Not that. <laughs> there we go. Audible. Audible. Yes. Audible was our sponsor this week. And we'd like to say thanks to them. First time that they were on the show, and it, I think it was pretty good. Uh, if you want to listen to uh, something, Audible has it. <laughs> yeah. I think we're talking over, about the big short, right? Yeah, with over 85... <laughs> No, if you want to listen to something, Audible has it. Oh, that's true. With over 85,000 titles and virtually every genre, you can find what you're looking for at audible.com. Get a free audiobook and 14-day trial today by signing up at audible.com or no, audiblepodcast.com slash Android app. And uh, it's good stuff. Very fun. Yes, we appreciate them sponsoring the show. Mm -hmm. All right. That's all we have for this week. So we'll be back next week with some more great stuff, too. For sure. And uh, look forward to the review that we have coming up of the Samsung Galaxy Tab. It's going to be a good one. So that'll be on the Android Tech Show. All right. See you guys later.